Morning, Nick. Yes, I spoke to George Galloway, the new Rochdale MP, yesterday, just minutes after he was sworn into Parliament, pretty much in silence in the House of Commons chamber. That controversial figure, as you'll remember, won the election miles ahead of the competition last Thursday after Labour were forced to withdraw their candidate. Mr Galloway said he won the election for Gaza and he was hoping that his first words that he speaks in the House of Commons would be about that. But he's wasted absolutely no time making waves already as he started in the Commons. He first made some very controversial remarks about the Holocaust and Nazi Germany. That comparison is said by many international definitions to be anti-Semitic. If the by-election had been in February of 1940 or 41, would anyone seriously have condemned me for putting the crimes of the Holocaust at the centre of my uh, election campaign? And yes, Nick, it is the fourth time that he's been elected to Parliament. He told me it was lovely to be back. He also said that it was his intention to replace the Labour Party like the Labour Party did with the Liberals back in the early 20th century. He also said they were looking to field up to 100 candidates now in the next election. He also told me that Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, was the greater of two evils and he wanted to take chunks out of his vote. Are you still looking at 60, possible 60 candidates and 60 seats? Actually, now I would have said we're heading towards 90 and we might even reach 100. Yeah. That's what I'm Do you about. think you're really just you're just going to be taking chunks out of Labour's vote, though, I rather hope than so. anything else? I hope so. so but it's our job to take chunks out of Labour. Even if it's you don't our, win? Is it worth yeah, it? Even if we don't win, yeah, it's worth it. We consider Keir Starmer to be the lesser, uh, the greater of the two evils, and we don't follow the lesser of two evils line in politics because that means evil always wins and it's our intention to replace the Labour Party in the way that Labour replaced the Liberals at the beginning of the 20th century. Last week, Rishi Sunak said he was very concerned at reports of intimidation during what he called the election of one of the most divisive campaigns that we've seen in modern times. Now, he took off his trademark hat yesterday as he was sworn in. He pledged allegiance to the king, holding a Bible. He was escorted by the father of the house, Peter Bottomley, uh, and a member of the Westminster uh, Alba Party as well. Sorry, the Westminster leader of the Alba Party uh, as well. And it's very clear from what he said to me yesterday that he wants to be a thorn in the side of Labour mainly. His aim to try and take chunks out of the Labour Party vote. This should be a wake-up call to that party that some of those left-wing voters that usually vote Labour are still vulnerable to other voices like George Galloway. He also said he would try and target Angela Rayner's seat as well. But for the Conservatives, well, they should be worried as well. George Galloway said the next election could also be uh, about Muslims and that Rishi Sunak was using extremism as as a wedge issue to try and desperately cling on to power. It's only been a few hours that he's been in Parliament, but he is already making waves. Natasha Clark, LBC's political editor, reporting, referencing the Alba Party. That, of course, is the Scottish nationalist and pro-independence political party led by Alex Salmond. Let's turn to Peter Ford, who's deputy leader of the Workers' Party of Britain. Now, Mr Ford has served as ambassador to Bahrain and to Syria, joins me now. Um, when Mr Galloway makes the assertion that he believes this could be Labour replacing, or the Workers' Party replacing Labour as Labour had replaced Liberals, what is the appeal of the party, Mr Ford? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nick. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you. I'm normally brushing my teeth and <laughs> listening to you at this time. It makes a nice change. Good to have you on, sir. Thank you. What's the appeal? What's the appeal of the Workers' Party? Well, the appeal was demonstrated by the 12,000-plus Rochdalians who voted for George. The appeal is a a combination of a deep concern uh, over the moral issue of what's going on in Palestine and Gaza and Israel, and uh, the, the alienation of um, many, many working class people of all races and variety. Um, The Workers' Party is not a one-trick pony. We don't just do Gaza, but we have a broad appeal. Indeed, I'd call it a a crossover appeal, which Labour can't match because they've become the party of Hampstead and parts of Islington. 
Noting that you are or have been spent seven years, if not longer, as a career diplomat, seven years serving as ambassador, how diplomatic are words and suggestions that Israel's actions are like the Holocaust, Mr Ford? <laughs> I think you're having a laugh. Uh, uh, Nick, I don't find don't anything... Need, you don't, I don't find anything. I'm glad you... I don't find any amusement in the Holocaust, and if you're questioning it, I can read you... Uh, vocabulary... I, I can... Just yesterday, can I speak? Yes, I, if you aren't. Que- are you questioning my assertion? Because that is directly what Mr. Galloway said. I just wonder why you laughed. Because you linked it to my experience as a, a diplomat. Um, anyone can that. have an opinion on yes. what George Galloway said. You don't have to be a diplomat to have a, a view. Right. Just yesterday, the head of the World Health Organization. Uh, uh, drew attention to dying babies and infants in Gaza. Yes. The situation is very grave. Uh, uh, as, is, as is the suggestion that some of the hostages are being sexually... By that. As is the suggestion that some of the hostages are being sexually abused by those who are holding them. Uh, so why um, don't Nick, we hear Mr Galloway... Can you tell me... Can you tell me how many of the alleged victims have come forward? Sorry, what's alleged victim? When you say alleged victims, what, sorry, alleged victims. Well, how, how? Yes, yes. It, how many victims have come forward then to M- make a Mr. claim of being Mr. raped? Mr. Ford, Mr. F- Mr. Ford, the, none. Mr. Ford, they're I being held. I can tell you the answer. I, I sense we might. None have, to... have come forward. Mr. Ford, they're being held by Hamas. How are they able to come forward? But, what, what the don't you understand? Nick, Nick, do your homework. You've not done your homework. The allegations are in respect I of think, those who were held, who I were think we're going attacked to. on 7 October. How can you check, call them... Ale- your facts. Mr Ford, how can you call them alleged victims? They're being detained by Hamas. They've been kidnapped. Look, 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 Nick, there are t- two categories. No, but would you answer that? There would, two, would, you, would you answer two, that? There are two categories here. Well, would you answer the, the question? The claims How could you... of which I'm aware, you may be aware of others, um, the claims that have been made relate no, no. to victims, alleged victims... But why do you use the word alleged? Who were there no. on 7 October, but M- Mr. not Ford. taken as M- hostages. M- Mr. F- no, these are people who are currently in captivity. That is the claim yesterday. So I can't well, understand well, why you're calling them alleged. Has, has, only, has only the status of... A claim. I think uh, we'll it has to... not been substantiated. All right. Look, one final question: um, Are you and your party leader, Mr. Galloway, in talks with any current Labour MPs, possibly some who've been deselected for the next election? Um, not to my knowledge, uh, frankly. Um, I'm, I think we would be very selective about any that we might want to recruit. Um, We have our own uh, potential candidates uh, already. Uh, This train has already Um, left the station. All right. Okay. Well, I'm grateful for your time. If I don't concur with many of your points, Peter Ford is Deputy Leader of the Workers' Party of Britain. Let's look at the claim that they can tear chunks out of Labour through the eyes of Dan Hodges, who's political commentator at the Mail on Sunday. His column this week, if Galloway's triumph doesn't wake the elite from their slumbers, then what the hell will? You were at the Rochdale by-election, I understand, uh, last week, Dan. Here's a question you always get asked on the radio or the TV. What was the mood as the numbers came in? Morning. Morning. Uh, well, it was quite despondent, amongst, certainly amongst the mainstream parties, um, who, who saw the extent to which George Galloway and the Workers' Party uh, were breaking, were breaking through, and the other parties were being were being left in his wake. And I think you know the interview there, um, you know, graphically underlined underlined why. I mean, obviously, the Workers' Party, a party that does have uh, a divisive agenda, an extremist agenda, and as as we've just heard, it, it, it now has a rape apologist agenda as well. It would appear like that. They're targeting Angela Rayner's seat. Dan, I don't need to remind you, slim majority, really four thousand two hundred plus. Uh, how realistic are their chances? Uh, the, the, the chances of actually winning the sea are, are very, very minimal, as are their chances, <clears throat> excuse me, nationwide. But what they can do certainly is 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 undermine Labour in, in, in many seats and, and let other parties come through the middle, which is why Keir Starmer and Labour MPs are very concerned about about the Galloway insurgency and the, and, and the threat the Workers' Party face. Lastly, Dan, 
I've been reading your material for years now. We don't know whether we're going in May, October, November. Have you ever known such a febrile atmosphere coming into a general election in this country, Dan? No, I mean it's. I mean, as you said, politics is is incredibly febrile at the moment. I mean, I do think one of the things about Galloway's win is I do think it makes a May election uh, much more much more likely. I think there will be oh, uh, right. a tendency for the Tories, yeah, for the for the Tories to go and Rishi Sunak to go early, whilst Labour does have this Galloway threat looming over it.